Thanks. Okay, and we're live. Uh, welcome to another uh, interview. Today we have Kyle uh, Aber, who is the voice of Ryu in um, Smash for Wii U and 3DS, as well as a bunch of other uh, appearances in various animes and video games. So great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me on, guys. Yeah. Joining me is uh, Spazzy, by the way. Hey, guys. So um, let's get started. You were also in a There Will Be Brawl, which is a great series. It's one of my favorite spinoffs of Super Smash Brothers. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. So um, how did you get involved with it? Uh, with There Will Be Brawl, um, other, another voice actor, Matt Mercer, who has uh, been doing games and, and anime himself for, for many years. We were recording together on a video game in Shanghai, believe it or not. We had uh, were recording on, um, I believe, Star Ocean. Um, okay. At the time, I think it was for Xbox 360, I think. And um, yeah, we're recording in Shanghai. We had done recording our sessions for the day. We're just walking down the streets, you know, looking for a place to eat or something. He goes, hey, you know, I just wanted to run this by you. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm working with some friends on, on, on this project. It's going to be like a live action kind of dark satire of the Smash Brothers universe. And we thought you'd make a really good uh, Wario. Would you be interested in that? I said, oh, sure. Wow. First of all, I'm honored. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, everyone, most, most everyone else had to audition, but uh, he pretty much just gave me that role. So I'm like, all right, well, I got to do this. I don't do very much on camera, but, um, you know, I, I, I do like doing things and helping out friends. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's how it began. And you've been yeah, I don't know if you should be uh, in, I'm like, that, that's got to be a kind of uh, a, a fun thing to be asked when you're like, uh, should I be honored that you wanted me to do this? Or should I be a little insulted that, that, that someone thought, Wario, you know, who'd be good for that guy? That, you know, uh, big, obnoxious, <laughs> greedy dude? Got the perfect that's guy. That's right. That's right. That's right. No, I, I didn't take it personally. I, uh, <laughs> I know I, I have a look. And that look suggests things. This is another reason why I, uh, I feel that voiceover for me is a much more uh, open field because it's not based on what you look like. And uh, that's why I have so much fun with it. But yeah, I, I, and I know there's only certain kinds of roles that I'm going to be able to fulfill on camera. And uh, hey, if Wario is going to be one of them, then hey, so be it. Uh, you know, that's a, that's a big <laughs> canon character there. Yeah, and you've been a long-term fan of the Super Smash Bros. series, right? And like Nintendo, of course, in general. Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm a casual gamer, but I have played it since, since the SNES days, and uh, it's it's been a part of my life on the various consoles and everything. Um, most recently, of course, on 3DS and everything. I'm pretty stoked about uh, Super Mario coming to iPhone, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that's just a no-brainer. I'm glad that uh, Nintendo is seeing their way to, to, to mobile. So do you have a particular favorite scene from There Will Be Brawl? A scene from There Will Be Brawl. <laughs> I laugh pretty hard on the pilot episode when you have Peach going, you think I'm a whore. <laughs> like, really? <laughs> Is this for real? I kind of like um, uh, the, uh, the, the, the brother who's special, air quotes. Yeah, uh, uh, with <laughs> Waluigi. <laughs> Waluigi, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's like, let's go go karting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I was I was sick as a dog that day. I mean, my nose was running and everything. So I'm wearing this nose prosthetic, and mm -hmm. it's filling up with boogers. I don't want to get G TMI here, but <laughs> that was a bad day. I was coughing up a lung. It was just bad. But that was hilarious. Everyone was just cracking up on the set with uh, with, with everything going on there. Yeah. Uh, you think there's going to be a... Uh... Any chance of there ever being an update to that? I mean, we have a new Smash Brothers game. Is there going to be a new uh, There Will Be Brawl? Like, where where do you see that going if they did it with uh, with all the new characters and everything? Um, I honestly don't know because I think uh, everyone's schedule is just too hectic. I mean, <laughs> that's a first world problem. But yeah. you know, with uh, especially now with the success of Critical Role, I think Matt and Marisha and all the other voice actors that that are on that side of it uh, are are. I mean, kudos on their success from that. But I don't see a return to the webisode stuff because you know that is that is that that dicey line of uh fair use and you know with all the rampant uh, censoring going on and youtube witch hunts and all that stuff you don't want to you don't want to rock the boat too much i guess yeah definitely is there any chance of there will be ball getting a dvd release i imagine that would be a copyright minefield <laughs> That would be a that, that'd be a slippery slope as well because you couldn't sell it outright because you're not allowed to profit on someone else's creation. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, you could just word it as, oh, if you made a donation, then as a prize, you'll get, you know, like, yeah, I don't know. They could, they could, they could still pretty much come down hard on that. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think there was, I, I think there was plans in the, in the, uh, in the early, early stages because people were very adamant about the, the fandom was very vocal. I mean, on the, on the last episode, you had people flying in from Australia just to be an extra. So, oh, wow. you know, on their own dime too. So, <laughs> It's like, hey, if you can come out and be an extra, great. All right, you from the other side of the planet, why not? <laughs> that must have been like really magical to have that experience, seeing all those fans uh, come out. Oh man, yeah, totally, totally. And I, I had some minimal stuff to do as as an extra in that. I think, uh, but yeah, it's it's pretty pretty awesome. And this was this was probably, I guess, before the days of crowdfunding. You know, with Kickstarter and Indiegogo. I mean, now it's just a matter of. I'm sure. I'm sure. You know, the goals would be made within hours. Uh, there's something of that now that it's it's reached this this cult status, and so many fans know about it and everything. But again, you know, the gray area. You know, you don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> with, you know, uh, Nintendo being a more family oriented brand is probably not going to get behind something with you know profanity and <laughs> violence. And, yeah, and very recently you know, they've been kind of um, striking down on a lot of fan games. Yeah, I guess most recently, what a, a Pokemon thing, or yeah. was that was that uh, Pokemon, the Pokemon Company? That, yeah. that was uh, Nintendo, I believe. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. They've been shutting down quite a bit recently, but you know, it's all within the right to do it. That's kind of a conversation for another time. Yeah. <laughs> ah, yes, yes, very much so. Yes. <laughs> uh, How uh, long have you been uh, voicing Ryu for? I believe since Street Fighter Four, right? Yep, correct. I am not the first English voice of, uh, of Ryu, but he had, uh, he, he'd shown up on, let's see, that really bad cartoon in the 90s. <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> the Street Fighter Two anime series, which was dubbed. Um, but uh, this was the first time in uh, the history of the games, I believe, where there's been an English voice actor uh, brought on or, or voice talent for, for the whole cast. And mm-hmm. uh, Capcom was... Uh, was hoping to establish uh, a cast for all future games in the franchise. So, you know, that was a pretty big coup for me, you know, just like, hey, I'm on this iconic game series, and, oh, I guess it's going to be a, an ongoing thing. Sweet! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, were you surprised when you were asked uh, to reprise uh, that role for uh, Smash Brothers? Did you know it was Smash Brothers that you were doing Ryu for? Actually, when you, when you were asked to come in? I actually did because uh, the, the studio kind of hinted around it because, you know, they take non-disclosure agreements very seriously. You know, you have mm-hmm. something of that magnitude. You actually have to end up signing, you know, a contract saying you, you won't talk about it even before <laughs> you record. Normally, we're, we, we sign these things after. But um, I kind of got the hint what I was going to be recording for when uh, they said, there's a project uh, with a prior character of yours. And it's, it's, it's like, all right, dude, I know what's going on. I, just, I follow gaming news. <laughs> I totally know what's happening here. So yeah, I was I was shocked in the best possible way. It was very, very cool. I was hoping that, uh, you know, seeing that other characters from other franchises were popping up, I said, hey, why not Street Fighter? You know, I, you know, and anything could happen. Literally anything can happen. I mean, yeah, they could just go and just recast it and whatnot i wouldn't have any say um Mm -hmm. but i'm I'm really honored that uh, they decided to to maintain consistent casting on that and to reach out to me because of course i want to do it i mean yeah well i mean it's interesting that you you say that because i mean what what could have easily have happened is what happened with another one of the downloadable uh content characters a third-party character which was cloud from final fantasy Mm -hmm. kept the japanese voice for both they could have easily done that for you as well but they did i uh maybe you can talk about this actually um I believe it's because um, Cloud's English voice actor is part of a union. Uh, yeah, there's union stuff, and there's always politics involved, you know, about uh, being able to, to, to work on a non-union project versus, versus doing that. Uh, I know it becomes a, a matter of personal choice, whether you want to do that sort of thing. Uh, I looked in the, in the bigger picture of, of wanting to work on a project of that magnitude, mm-hmm. uh, and I respect other actors that, that don't. Uh, I'm totally cool with that. So yeah, that that's kind of where it is. It's always a political thing, and you know, I, I hate that politics gets mired in, yeah. in that sort of thing. Are you are you part of a union? Uh, I am. 
Yeah. Okay. All right. So maybe maybe it wasn't the union. We we actually don't have an official stance on it yet. Yeah. Nothing was really ever said, so it's all speculation at this point. Oh, whether uh, Smash was a union thing? Yeah, because well, um most of the time uh Smash uses non-union voice actors. Like they actually re- oh, okay. recasted some of the roles for non-union people. Oh, and okay. So, well, also it also depends on where uh, they decide to record because of location too. I, I've mm-hmm. recorded for you know Pokemon Origins, which for whatever reason they decided not to record in New York. They brought that to the West Coast, so uh, I was uh, hired to play a younger Professor Oak for that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like a, a sapling, if you will. Not a not a full oak yet. Not a full uh, oak. That is right. <laughs> yeah. Sap just dripping all over the place. <laughs> um, so. I mean, when you provided uh, the voice for, for Ryu and Smash, was there anything unique about it or, or different from doing uh, Ryu in Street Fighter? I mean, were you aware that of uh, Ryu's, I guess, fighting style within Smash and uh, anything like that? Because he had, I know, for instance, kind of like the heavy and light versions of moves, the ones that did the inputs and didn't. So you'd have to do like Hadouken twice and things like that. Right. Did you kind of, well, the, yeah. the, the biggest difference is just the sheer amount of dialogue. I mean, I'm done in like 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> because, you know, in Smash, there's only so much going on. There's not a bunch of cutscenes and story mode and all that stuff, you know, unlocked. Or or if there is, you know, cutscenes, there's, there's really no VO involved. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's a much faster process. I show up to the to the project, and they're kind of geeking out. I kind of felt like I, I walked in on a convention panel or something. It's like, <laughs> oh, my God, this is so cool. What's the reason? It's like, no, wait a minute. That's my job. I have to freak out because I get to record on Smash. What? crazy uh are you aware of when it was actually uh recorded like do you remember in in relation to when the dlc was announced or when it came out i believe it's just a matter of months Uh, it was a pretty quick turnaround normally when they localize japanese games it takes up to a year or longer Mm -hmm. uh but this was a much faster process because i guess it's easier to implement and you know if it's dlc the game's already locked in and and all that, it's probably not that hard. Um, so, yeah, I remember on my birthday, uh, Nintendo went ahead and announced that, and E3 was, was going on, and it was pretty wild. That was a nice birthday present. <laughs> <laughs> um, so do you have any stories from the recording sessions? I know, I know you said that they were freaking out about you being there. Yeah, it was just pretty funny. I mean, just uh, when you record for video games, it's always a, uh, you're, you're always doing like a two or three takes of every line. Uh, and if the, they don't care for, you know, the take that you give them, you can always get another set. They'll, they'll give you a redirect. It's like, hey, faster, higher pitched, uh, a little bit slower, something like that. I'll give them A, B, and C. You know, it's like, so this is smash. So this is smash. So this is smash. You know, it's like, all right, well, pick up the pace. <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. And yeah, yeah, it really was, you know, nothing that really stood out from any other video game process you know um if anything it was similar to league of legends where uh i'm recording character shout outs for in-game battle stuff you know just very short little things very concise uh and even the fight sounds which normally in a video game you're recording your dialogue first and then you save your fight sounds towards the end of the session you could be recording two hours four hours or maybe multiple four hour sessions and um you know, you could blow your voice out pretty easily if you're sitting there, you know, oh, God, you know, at the top of your lungs for <laughs> half hour or more. <clears throat> and then you start coughing. And then you uh, you hope to God that you have some tea with honey or some Chinese cough syrup or, you know, magic, magical lozenges that, uh, you know, help you get through the session and, and hopefully get you, keep your, your, your voice intact for the next job. Mm-hmm. So uh, were there any unused lines that you recorded for Smash? I don't recall because, you know, there's so every every client in terms of any game in the show are really kind of standoffish about letting the talent take the scripts home and all that stuff because, you know, obviously they don't want people leaking yeah. information and all that. So I don't recall. I mean, I wasn't able to keep the script, but I do know that they, they must have used everything because I didn't record very much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you, you, I guess, you, you know, you've, you've had the experience of, of Ryu and Smash. Uh, let's, let's do kind of a two-part question here. There, is there any character that you've recorded for anything else that you would you'd think would be a good fit for Smash Brothers? Probably not as big of a fit as Ryu. And also, if you had, oh. if, you could, if you could portray any character from that's currently in Smash Brothers, if you're like, I'd like a chance to to do the voice for that character, uh, which one would it be? Oh man, that's a good one. Captain Falcon, say very much. <laughs> <laughs> 
and he goes, come on! And, yeah. you know, Falcon Punch, Falcon Kick, Some Falcon... Moves. <laughs> so you're used to saying it with a Japanese accent. Falcon the Punch! <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but, hey, let's get some DBZ action in there. But, of course, you know, if they ever did Dragon Ball Z, they're, they're probably just going to get Goku. <laughs> <laughs> what let's just have a disembodied voice. <laughs> you see the, the narrator from... Uh... Oh, That's right. It's it. like next time on Super yeah. Smash Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> like, who are we punching? There's no one there. Like, I know. <laughs> Previously, you know. <laughs> the thing about the narrator's God. <laughs> oh, disembodied voice is top tier. T.O.P. for me, man. <laughs> T.O.P. <laughs> okay, well, we'll just go in general. And let's see that make this one a little more realistic. Out of actual okay. just, like video game characters. Uh, what yeah. character would you like to see in the next Smash Brothers? What character is not in Smash Brothers that you think should probably be in there next time around? Oh, my God. I want to go really old school here. How about some Earthworm Jim? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Earthworm Jim would be pretty amazing. That would be awesome. Yeah. Oh, man. Let's go one further and have Dan Castellaneta, who did the voice of the cartoon, have him <laughs> do the voice. You're like, go, Ruby! <laughs> <laughs> He's such a groovy guy, and he had a little dog sidekick. Was that? That's that right. was not in the games, though. I think that was only in that cartoon. <laughs> that was uh, that was only in the cartoon, which is uh, fantastic, and has never officially come out on video. And I hope that they do that. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Earthworm Jim needs more more love. I mean, every now and then, I guess they re-release the older games, but they haven't. They don't do anything. I'm not even sure who owns Earthworm Jim right now. Actually. The company that owned it, didn't they just sell off all of their IPs? Once again, this is a conversation for a completely different time. That's <laughs> something that I am not prepared, to, prepared for. But anyways. <laughs> Probably something where the, where the creators are like, hey, we got to make money because we're not making any money right now. And then someone else can turn around and make tons of money with it. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. So you also do the voice for Big the Cat in uh, Sonic. I have uh, I have been uh, very guilty of recording <laughs> uh, Big the Cat, also known as Jar Jar Binks of the Sonic Universe. John so, St. John was originally the, the voice, uh, Duke Nukem oh, right. himself. Mm -hmm. uh, I was asked to uh, do a voice match and ended up doing kind of something just kind of on my own take on that. I ended up on Sonic Colors for DS. And I did record a whole playable level for Generations, which they scrapped. So my name <laughs> is on the credits for Big the Cat in Sonic Generations, but I am not to be found anywhere on that game. But I got paid. You know, that doesn't uh suck. Yeah, as long as you get paid, man. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, we can like having that credit. You know, I, I recorded on the Old Republic for Star Wars, and I said, oh, my God, this is I could die happy. I'm on Star Wars. And then the game came out, and they replaced me. So <laughs> it's uh, like, all right. The the MMO, the Old Republic? Correct. All right. Yeah, you've done some MMO work. You were you you did some uh, WoW work. You were Al Galang the, the Observer, correct? Yes, sir. I killed you many times. Many oh, times. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or did I kill you? I'm the raid killer. That's true, actually. It goes both ways. <laughs> there you go. Uh, relationship. Um, back to Big the Cat. So if Big yeah. the Cat was in Smash Brothers, how would he play? Would you play as Big the Cat? I, I would totally do it. I just know it would be completely useless. <laughs> he'd just go around, like, hey, Froggy. Hey, what's going on? Hey, guys. And everyone else will just gang up on him and just kick his ass. It would just be... <laughs> Going back to, um, I guess we're, we're talking about uh, some of uh, both announcer work and work, um, things that you that may have been cut that you don't remember. So uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 3, Ultimate Marvel vs. Uh -huh. Capcom 3. Uh, when the characters were tagged out, they would say the name of the characters who were tagging in. There's other instances where names of characters were said. Were there any character names that uh, were recorded that weren't used? I don't, I don't believe so. And if there were... It might have been saved for DLC that later came out. But again, I didn't get to keep the script, so no juicy tidbits there, I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, it, it, it's funny. I, I, we've you know spoken to a few voice actors at, at this point, and I, it's just you guys record so much, it's hard for you to remember what's going on. Oh, God, yeah. Again, a first-world problem, you know. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I'm recording so often that I can't keep them straight. My God. Yeah, you was... know, luckily, you go and record and if you record for something you have done before, they have a reference audio clip that they can, they can play for you. So you can at least go, oh, yeah, I remember that guy. And they sit there and match it. And it's like, all right, we're off and running. 
<laughs> yeah, it was, it was funny. We we uh, talking to Xander Mobis, who did the announcer work for Smash Brothers for for Wii U and 3DS. And I guess because Smash Brothers has such this huge speculative scene, and they're so secretive about it that uh, yeah. they actually had him record just a bunch of just fake names, just fake mm-hmm. video game character names, because he had he had no idea who was in the roster. He said, "Yeah, I don't know." Like he's like it's Simon Belmont, um, Altier from <laughs> Assassin's Creed. He's like just huge list of names. And he's like, I, "I'd play a game where I was just trying to figure out myself who was actually real." So that's you know that that's, that's very smart on their part if they if they came up with this ultimate list of every possibility that, <laughs> that, that sounds like you'll just be brainstormed in a marketing meeting yeah. or something <laughs> and then hey the voice actor's done the wiser and we'll never have to bring him back and pay him again because he's already yeah. recorded the name yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whatever we want to do for dlc we're, we're golden <laughs> it's really quite brilliant so uh, of us uh, smash announcer if you, if you were able to be the smash announcer in the next game how would you take it I would totally DBZ it up, man. I'd be Monster Truck Tractor for <laughs> Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> I would make it sound probably like WWE. <laughs> oh, yeah! Is there a- fight! <laughs> Oh man, they should uh, man, they should just have they should have alternate alternate announcer work in next Smash Brothers. Just just really do it up. You yeah. can, you know, pick your style. Why not pick your menu? Yeah, you style. can pick your menu music. You should be able to pick your announcer. Oh man, I remember that on some games on like Xbox or maybe it was it PS two or three when you you could actually customize your soundtrack. You're playing a racing game. And you want to listen to what you want to listen to. You don't want to listen to their generic techno. You know, you're like, I want to put on my stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that was always uh, just a lot of fun when you can do that in games. Especially, like, when you're, like, I remember, you know, you make, like, a fight night, I think, for, like, Xbox. And some of the wrestling games, too. I'm like, I can make my own custom, like, music and custom entrance and just download whatever I want. And that sort of stuff should be easier now, but I feel like uh, there's so much more control with uh, with yeah. what they allow you to do. There's because a lot more uh, copyright because of online interactions and stuff like that, right? Yeah, yeah. It's I, I guess when when the whole uh, hard drive in home consoles thing and uh, regular internet access it, it was it was so much more in it, it's kind of its infancy that things were they were trying a lot more. Now they kind of got it down. Well, the internet's not like that wild the wild wild west. You know, everyone's trying to make yep. a, a quick buck and <laughs> oh, the royalties here, the residuals there, and you know every you know saw these games coming out in Japan that will never come out here because they have to split profits with so many companies, and then you end up with games that don't have dubs. Because dubs, let's, let's face it, are expensive to produce. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You've talked more about what Matt Mercer is doing than what you're doing. So what are you working on now? Oh, well, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. That game with certain characters. That, no, I, it's, <laughs> it's always a, a case of I can't talk about it unless I'm told I can talk about it. And I'm never told I can talk about it until it comes out. <laughs> it's like, oh, man, I got to sit on this. Like when I first record every Street Fighter I'm on. It's always done like a year before it comes out, and it sucks because I would go to E3, hear my voice on these huge screens, these trailers, and I can't say anything. It's like, <laughs> and you know, when you sign those NDAs, you know they're within their right to sue you within an inch of their your life if you break that. And then you know, the, the bigger ramification is they could just blacklist you and never make sure you never work again. Uh, as, as tempting as it is to sit there and, and, and tweet and Facebook post and Instagram, you know, I'm in the booth recording for this, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> if you see that, you better pray that, that that person got the blessing of the studio. Um, s- kind of speaking about dubs and um, caption, like subtitle, do you have a particular style that you prefer personally, like your for your own pers- personal consumption of anime? Yeah. I, uh, I like watching shows in English because uh, I, I have a, a difficult time keeping up with subtitles. Sometimes it'll, you know, I'm busy reading and then it goes so fast I miss the animation. So I'm going to miss the subtleties of what the character is doing. Mm-hmm. And that's just me. I'm going to never argue that one acting is better than another because, first of all, I don't speak Japanese. Mm-hmm. Uh, second of all, we have this little thing called DVD and the internet and, <laughs> you know, the version that you're most pleased with. I just say, don't give the other side grief over how they want to consume their their media, you know? Uh, I think as the creator of those things, they're super stoked that their story's being licensed for a worldwide audience, you know? The silliest thing that somebody can do is complain about uh, more options. <laughs> yeah. I wish this had less options. Yeah, meanwhile, we're, we're, we're torrenting and pirating and, and bringing down the studio because, you know, <laughs> piracy. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, do we have time for additional questions? Go or- for it. 
Okay. So uh, what's one role in your um, voice acting career that you particularly enjoyed? One that like really stood out for you? Uh, well, Gohan and DBZ was iconic because I started as a fan of that show and that was the first big professional voice gig I got. So it meant a lot as a fan and as a professional because that, that started my career. I was, um, you know, I wouldn't have anything else without DBZ on my belt. So it's hard to pick just one, you know, because Ryu and Street Fighter and Smash and everything, he eventually got to be on Wreck-It Ralph. So getting to be on part of that and Disney deciding to hire the original voice talent for that that was uh that was something i particularly i'm probably most proud of even though it's just a cameo but hey i got to say i'm in a disney movie i could die happy <laughs> yeah that's that's amazing um how did you get involved with dbz i was actually a radio dj at the time for radio oh. disney and they, they still exist but uh, i remember i was that. doing um uh, yeah i was on the air uh, me and Kara Edwards were on the air at the same time, and we ended up auditioning for Funimation. We heard about trying out, and uh, she eventually got the part of Goten and Videl, and then I got Gohan and the narrator, and I eventually took over Ox King and stuff. Yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty wild. Yeah. Um, this was back in 2000, so oh my god. Yeah, so it's been 16 years now. It's been a lifetime! <laughs> <laughs> now they're doing more DBZ. Oh, yeah. God, we got Xenoverse 2. Yeah, I guess it's safe to say that's coming out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm in there. Oh, you know. so, there you go. Look, we know something you've uh, recently worked on or are currently work on, working on. So we're... There you go. Uh, you can hear me on One Punch Man as Atomic Samurai in the final three episodes. Nice. Huh. Nice. Yes. Very nice. Look, all these things. You said you couldn't tell us anything. <laughs> yeah, I know, because, uh, well, that got announced. <laughs> That actually got announced before the episodes have aired. It's like, really? Okay, sweet. You're like, what I meant was I couldn't tell you anything interesting. <laughs> yeah, but see, I'm dropping all these bombs, and it's, it's more surprising <laughs> that way, right? It's like, oh, wait, right. I can tell them that. I can tell them this. Oh, my God, I'm pretty sure I can tell them that. <laughs> oh. So, I mean, having done video game voice work, is there any particular game that you uh, haven't had a chance to work on that you really would like in the future to be involved with? Oh, God, yeah. I, I've read for all these franchises, but they've yet to cast me. Like, all the Arkham Knight, Batman stuff, Star Wars, uh, Gears of War, Halo, Borderlands, Walking Dead, basically every huge franchise there is <laughs> that I'm not a part of. <laughs> You're like, I want to be a part of all of those. <laughs> I do, and I'm very, very blessed that I at least get to audition for them. You know, I wouldn't have that opportunity if I were still in Dallas. Uh, and I, I decided it depends on your goal as, as an actor what you uh, where you need to be. And for me, I need to be at the West Coast. And so I've been in Los Angeles ever since 2005. And uh, fortunately, it has it has been a wise decision. It's worked out to my advantage. So here I am talking to you guys about all the games and shows I've done. That's because I've made that choice, basically. Yeah, uh, life is a lot, a lot about taking opportunities that it presents to you, right? And in the case of, of voice acting, it's, you know, freelance. It's very much a risk. It, mm -hmm. You know, there's, it's never consistent work. You know, I can say that despite the popularity of all those roles and properties I've been very fortunate to be a part of, there's no real forward momentum in that because it's a very competitive field. You know, I'm not hired because I did those voices. I'm hired because they think I'm right on the part based on the audition. So... You know, voice actors, no matter how experienced they are, uh, end up actually auditioning more than they work. You know, mm -hmm. maybe out of 100 things I try out for, I might get three or four. So the batting average is pretty low. But uh, when I do get hired, it makes it all worth it. One yeah. day you'll get those additional voices in, in a Star Wars game. I, I have faith. I believe. I, I believe too, man. Fingers yeah. crossed. I appreciate the support. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with Star Wars coming uh, back in a big way, I mean, they need people yeah, for the movies. Games. Yeah, I'm sure they're, I, you know, I don't even know uh, because our, Disney's no longer doing it in-house because of yeah. Battlefront and stuff. So they're going to be licensing it out. So I'm sure there's going to be a lot of Star Wars work coming up soon. I say that with absolutely yeah. no basis in it, but I mean, it sounds like it. it sounds like it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Anything you have any more, is possible. Yeah. You have any uh, more questions, Bush? Uh, I think I'm about finished. All right. You want to let everybody know, Kyle, uh, where they can reach you? Sure thing. I'm on Twitter, at Kyle A. Bear. Now, make sure you spell the last name right. It's K-Y-L-E-H-E-B-E-R-T. Looks like Hebert, but it's pronounced A. Bear. Blame the <laughs> Louisiana French for that one. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, so was my, my okay, website. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> KyleABear.com has all my latest convention appearances and uh, latest project updates. And I just did this massive update for all my credits list. I've been on a few things in the past 16 years. <laughs> yeah, you're so, uh, yeah. Kamiya. China, yeah. Who the hell do you think I am? Yep. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. 
Gurren <laughs> Lagan, still getting a lot of love. Yeah, that's an amazing series. I love it. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and um, we'll record the outro after this. So I'll stop the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> all right fantastic guys thank you so much for the opportunity thank you listeners worldwide for checking out the games and shows and we'll see you out there make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with our latest interviews news and discussion videos follow us on twitter using the at all source gaming if you really enjoyed this interview make sure you check out our interview with xander mobis who was the announcer for smash for wii u and 3ds as well as our interview with Dean Harrington, who is the announcer for Super Smash Bros. Melee. We are the only Smash channel on YouTube who are doing these kinds of interviews, who are doing a lot of the translations that you guys are reading, so make sure you subscribe to stay up to date. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time.